My name is Tina Dam. I'm from Denmark. I currently live in LA working for ICANN. My role here is director of the IDN program. ICANN is in charge of making sure that the domain name system stays secure and stable. We do that by having coordination oversight of different identifiers, such as domain names, for example. One of those elements is that addresses are unique. So if I send an email to you, I know that it can only go to one person. It, ha it is unique. It's your email address, and I know if I send it, it gets to you. And if it doesn't get to you, I'll get an error back. Now, as we moved into internationalized domain names, that is one of the challenges that we have, is to keep those addresses unique. You don't know anything about the internet, really. You know, you have never really been online, you don't really know how to use emails. And you read an article in a newspaper one morning, and it's really interesting to you, and you want to um, email this person or go to that website or something, there are better chances that you're going to remember what that address is if it's in your native or local language. An internationalized domain name is a domain name that um, is made up of other characters than what you, um, you know, from the start had available. So what you had available from the start was these. So it was A, B, C, all the way through set, and then 0, 1, 2, 9, and then a dash. So these are the 37 characters that you could use in the old days, so to speak, if you wanted to uh, register a domain name. So everything that you have here is what we call the top level. Um, .com, .info, .net, .org, all of those are top level. And right now, you can only have these kind of characters at the top level. Now, with IDNs, we're expanding this set so that you can have um, not any kind of character that are used in languages in the world, but, but close to it. The goal is to have as many characters available as possible. And we're talking tens of thousands of characters. That's one of the challenges with IDNs, because you're adding so many characters um, to the original set of characters that you could use in domain names. And when you're adding these, and a lot of them look alike, um, you get into problems with is this really a unique address? So I'm from Denmark, so I can write in Danish. So um, you could have like this, and I'm just going to put DK. So you see there's these two characters that don't belong to the setup here. Mm -hmm. That makes that an IDN. You know, you want to see something that's in your own language. You know, how, how are you going to remember that it was this, which mm -hmm. stands for blueberry? Uh, dot DK, um, you know, you won't. If, if that was like all in Chinese characters and you had to learn how to type that in, that would be pretty hard for you too. You know, I'm not saying that people in Japan will be communicating with you using a Japanese domain name, but they will be communicating internally in Japan. I think it's exciting. IDNs obviously is the most exciting part of it because IDNs will make so many more users around the world be able to use the internet. That was it for this time, but just so you know, we're going to come back with another video that's going to talk about how these internationalized top-level domains are working. Um, we're launching a test, and uh, we're going to come up with a video that will show you um, how you can participate in that and help us evaluate if things are set up in the right way.